designates those locations and the names of the river. I think currently what we're when we're talking about current boat range, we're talking about existing ramps that we have that are needed to repair. Can you have a road? Well, I understand you got it along the same line. Yeah. For instance, as I was stating this morning, those that would be eligible for the uh, DMR participation funding uh, would require an all weather of access. Most of these do not. A number of these are not. Some of them are still being able to provide improvement to should the EMR accept those. Now, um, John, behind you, could probably help us explain these plans. John, you want to help us? Sure.
Does it have a ramp? No. It's the side of the river. Peyton Bridge is similar on the east or left bank of the river. As you're heading uh, east towards Hamburg Road, you turn right, things are right down there. Never happened. Um, uh, Franklinville, that's where the bridge is closed. There is parking there. The neighboring landowner made a point of saying uh, the wall dogs, he'd be happy to let us in on his area because he worries about people getting broken into it. I've seen that happen with words about it. State Road is the big problem because where we used to go in, everybody else did is private land and you put up aggressive trespassing signs. I believe you can still get down under the bridge, but it's a steep bluff straight down. That one. So, Different solution is needed. And of course, in between uh, Skipper Bridge, uh, there's the uh, Wimpy County put up a new bridge. There's fence that you can't get down the river from, so that doesn't count at all. Uh, US 41 or North Boston Road. If you turn up Valdell and then you turn right on that little access road that goes to the county sewer, you can then get down the side of the highway. I don't really recommend it because it's, it's that last stretch that once you pass the sewer place is very popular. The last time I was down there, with somebody living under the bridge. I might go park. It's but stones throw away, so why not go there? The only real problem with playing the old park is okay, three things. When the water is low, there is no flow. There's pretty much always a log jam just above the ramp. The ramp itself usually has a sandbar across it and there's all the cobbles and access road. Um, it's possible to deal with all those things the Parks and Rec has previously, so the log jam can help that out. Um, so then the next downstream is <coughs> on the strip of land from Bornto all the way down to the river. You know where the Y is, and you know where uh, the city built its pump station right by the Y. That takes up about three quarters of the width of that county 80 foot wide right away. But there's still room beside it where you can go down to the river. That's an impediment because the neighboring landowner uses it as a firewood and junk repository. But he's amenable to you know, take a work session out there and cleaning that up. It's not the easiest access because it's basically cypress knees half the way down there, a thousand feet. It's convenient though, it's halfway between Lightning Park and the next one down is Troopville Boat Ramp. So I have with Gucci to turn right and go upstream a little bit. The Troopville Boat Ramp, great boat ramp, pop holes there, but uh, the park's correct, fixes it up from time to time. Upstream on the Little River, currently the only connects public access is Folsom Bridge. It's 25 miles. However, the county owns an acre on the Little River at the bottom of the Little River Road, which I don't know what the status of that is. I don't know what else the county is possibly using it for. But that'd be a great place to declare as public access to break up that 25 mile stretch. They're probably going to put the county happy because it's more possible to vote all the way down. Below the Troopville boat ramp, next is USA 4. You can put in and take out there. I have. You park in the median on the last hand side, scramble down a 45 degree loose rock abutment for about uh, 30 feet, and then go through the brambles. You can, I don't recommend it. It'd be nice if there was better access there. If you're going to pick one or two places to put an additional access, let's say either there or State Road. Downstream from there, as you mentioned, there's a uh, Knights Ferry next to the state line, all good boat ramps. Uh, Knights Ferry, of course, is on a dirt road, and somebody stole the road sign the county put up there. <coughs> and I believe it's still the sign. No, it's not still the name the state line. Um, Spook Bridge, Lindale Company owns the access to the old Whitman Highway. They uh, let us have access to put in, for example, on the recent battle where Jeremy Kicks said a few words as we uh, went off. I don't know that they really want to have the public in general using that. They're very concerned about liability. Those people 
before you actually get to Spook Bridge, there's an inland bridge, and they're worried people might drive over that and something heavy and fall in. So if you want some access between Trueville Boat Ramp and Knight's Ferry, it's other than what's there now, it's traveling down between the two bridges on US 84. Well, maybe something could be done there to improve it. Or that's the best I'm coming up with right now. Brooks County has no public access to either the Little River or the Future. So they've been trying to find spots to buy for ages, nobody will sell them. Everybody thinks that the next road down from 122 on the Little River, um, the Little Pond Road, I think it is, they think that's public access, but it's not. The access is actually privately owned, so we don't advertise it. Uh, each of these places, except that one, has a street address because a couple years ago we asked SGRC to come up with that, so we put it on our water trail map which if you don't have it, you have to get a copy of it. There's also boat ramps at Grassy Pond and at one or two other lakes in Miles County with the public. And of course, the daily boat ramp. Thank you. Looking forward to making a sign here down in the water. Is so that what you wanted to do? Thank you. That's it. Thank you. Hey, so are you looking, looking at possibly upgrading as many as people? Oh, maybe two a year or three a year or Current the discussion, to my knowledge, has been on the existing concrete ramps, which would be the Highway 31, Knights Ferry, and Mansion Bridge. Those are the ones that currently that we're having discussions about addressing, upgrading those. Now, in the future, as we move forward, do we want to look at other improvements of accessibility on some of these other locations, I would have to say that yes, that's a, that's a viable option. If we begin to get citizens that are actively using these other points of egress into the stream, then certainly yes, that's an option that we can look at. But initially on the front end, uh, and, I, and I'm not sure that the grant process that DNR is talking about, I believe that it's existing ramps that they're talking about. Yeah, not in. So yeah, right. build, yeah, not go in and build a new ramp it's to make improvements to existing ramps. Uh, but so, like you said, we we should keep our eye on possible additional ramps that would cut that gap from 25, 30 miles of river with no entrance. So, Mr. Pritchard, you know, I know you're not prepared for this, but if you can find out. I know that Commissioner Weisenbaker and I both have had a couple of people call us, and one was a former county commissioner, Mr. Hall, about that little river road access point that uh, Mr. Corbin just mentioned. Um, can you just like give us a just a quick email, a summary of what the status of that area is? Do we own it? I mean, there's been fighting about somebody putting a chain up and locking it, and somebody's cutting my lock, the lock off. And I talked to Mike about it briefly, but it's been probably a year ago now, and um, there's been all kind of allegations and stuff thrown around about it. But if we legitimately own that property, do we have to provide public access? I guess is really my first question. If we if we don't, then is there a, a more secure way to to barricade the end of Sam Pitt Road or Little River Road, whatever it is? Um, I don't. I just. I guess all that to say. I just like to know a little more about where we're at with, with that, what what we do, don't do. When you speak of grants that the you know, I have, uh, are there any matching funds associated with it or any kind of services we can work? No, there were some, uh, I believe we had some role in um, some of the discussion with, with George would require uh, some involvement, but I think it's very limited on those that we would share the name because we um, are, again, those that are qualified, they will assume those responsibilities. When you start talking about those that do not, those are going to be issues where, yes, you as the commission can ask. 
there's no telling how many agencies in this community that their mission is to address homelessness. But I don't know that anybody in this room knows what they're doing. How effective they are, even with what they're doing. And where they're, you know, they get their funding, they get grants, they do these sort of things, but we don't know how effective they are. But I think that this has the potential of being a vehicle that will allow this group to go out there and look at those things and bring them all under maybe one umbrella so that you, you have a better understanding of we and that's the community as a whole on a lot of these issues. Social issues, it doesn't matter. You can just keep right on going with them. Now, has it turned out like I really envisioned it from the get-go? I'll be honest with you and say absolutely not. It, it, it just happened. They've had a lot of stumbling block blocks, like we said. They had a stumbling block in leadership. You know, lost Audrey King uh, that was toting the flag, and then they had to go and get Scott Ferguson. and he agreed to step up and do it, along with Dr. Carl Hall. Um, and, and then we just, it kind of bogged down again, and then of course they tried to pick it back up the other day, and now we had that loss of that, a major stagnant, not just a, this was one of the owners in the company, one of the principals. Um, so the folks that were making the presentation, that were putting everything together, you know, we don't know where they're going and what they're going to do at this point. So honestly, right now, I think it's something that we still want to consider. We still want to keep it out there. Now, for what point right now do you say you know, how is it going to affect if it's going to affect budget in 2021? I have to be honest with you to tell you, I don't know. I mean, because they haven't even come up with any type of organizational plan to say, well, this is what we would like to see uh, local governments do, or what we'd like to see the private sector do. There's all of these unanswered questions that are still out there. So I would think that this would still fall under, uh, in my opinion, under the long term goal. We want, because I think it can go on beyond. 2020 before it's actually solidified and there's any kind of process put in place. And, and if that's the case, I, I'm not sure that it would affect the 2020-2021 budget. However, you may want to consider asking Mr. Pritchard to put some funding there just in the event that if we are asked to do something, at least we've got something that we could possibly consider. Because if that ask came in um, August, we wouldn't have any funding to participate at all or to do anything, and it would be kind of on the outside looking in. So I think we need to at least consider that. Um, and, you know, is it a um, matter related to future growth? I think if we grow as a community, there's going to continue to be these social issues out there that's going to need to be addressed. And I don't feel like that all of these issues are something that should fall on the doorsteps of the local government. Can we play a role to help another process, another group, or somebody else to address these issues? Absolutely we can. But you know, as our homeless population continues to grow, you know, there's a bigger demand on local government to say, what are you going to do about homeless? What are you doing about homeless? And those are some things I'm not sure that we are prepared as well as government to, to answer, you know, or to you know, take some steps in. Of course, it's, it's just so fragmented right now. This, in my hopes, was an opportunity for that to kind of get some organization to all of it so that we would have something that we could look at and then move forward. So, kind of budgetary figure, you want to put in our budget for 2020? I would personally, I, I mean, I would say no more than 15, 20,000 dollars. <laughs> the study was like, was it 25,000 for the study, the participating in the study before? Correct. Right. Have we already written that check? It's already been made. Yes. No, 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 no. We were told two years ago we would see value for the money that we spent in a report on these folks. Two years I've seen nothing. I've seen evidence of nothing. And I went to my constituents in, in whatever way, shape, or form you want to say. We got some pushback out of that. We said, this is going to be different. This group is one by Austin. We've, we've shoulder to shoulder with Boston State University and this 
person and that person, and we can't not be a part of this. We're going to get value out of this. Two years later, there's still no evidence of any value. So I'm going on the record as not supporting any future expenses related to this. Well, just let, me, let, me, let me address that. And, and and tell me if I'm wrong. I mean, if, well, if I thought I, we already, I thought I had tried to address those issues is that it hasn't come out of the, out of the gate like anybody, in my opinion, and certainly me, I'm the first one, and as I said, I'm not happy with where it's at right now, is that any particular, uh, any one group's fault, or is it still in the process? I will tell you this, and I think Mr. Pritchard will verify, they did create a draft report of what you were talking about, but we were told, do not circulate this because it is a draft until the stakeholders with that committee group that had an opportunity to review it and revise it and, and get it in presentable form. So they haven't done that yet. So you have, you're right, in the two years since we started talking about this, we haven't seen anything on it. Now, you're talking about constituents. I've also had constituents and folks in this community that are, that have been involved with this, some that seem to be involved with it on kind of an outside but are aware of it. And they're pretty adamant about that it's important that we move forward with this. Now, does anybody know at this time what that picture is going to be? All I'm saying from the standpoint is just to earmark some money in case this whole issue comes together, in case you get the report and we get everything, and then there's an additional ask to kick this thing on out. Because remember, the money was for the study to start. Well, that we, was don't, we don't even have any evidence of what we've spent our money on thus far. Why are we going to reallocate more tax dollars to, for something that we I'm not, not got? Well, I'm just saying potentially. That's all I'm saying is just that it's, the, the ask could potentially be out there if you get all the information that you need. If you're not. Honest. The, the, the last thing I heard on it was uh, on what possibly slowed things down when they spoke about an executive director, uh, hiring and bringing on an executive director, and then the issue of funding with that. That's the last thing that I kind of heard on it. I can fill that a couple of blanks that Buck uh, Bill left out. Um, you're right. We got a little back. Um, Bill uh, was very, uh, along with a couple of others, was um, not pleased with the report. Not so much the report, but it, the report in many ways became re recommendations of solutions without dealing with some of a list of what the problem was. And the frustration of those key members, that executive committee, began to be, well, we want to know what the problem is. We think we know. Uh, but we need you to verbalize those, put it in print, let us look at it, and decide how we move forward. In my opinion, it began to transition. And the markets, you're right. The discussion that one of the meetings began, we need to hire somebody, where can we locate it, where we can locate it, and development authority, because we've already got furniture there, and there's a problem. Wait, 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 we still don't know what the problems are, and we don't have an idea how we're going to go about it. Again, it began to take on more steam after that part of it began to slow down. Um, the, Consultant and the key members, that being Aldrich and Dr. Carball, began to put together committees, committee chairs, whose job was to go out and get other people involved in this project. My concern was that it was a snowball rolling downhill picking up steam, but we don't know what it's supposed to do or what it's, how it's going to function. Because we said, 
where's the money coming from? The county being the main force saying, whoa, 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 whoa. If you're going to hire somebody, you've got to have money. If you're going to do this, there needs, there's going to have to be money. Who's going to pay? Well, here's how we're going to pay. We're going to, we, not this committee, this person, or this government, committee, this committee was going to go to businesses and say, we need you, Mr. Banker or Mr. whatever, to allocate X amount of dollars per year for the next five, seven, ten years of this project. That began to slow down a whole lot more. And then, we met and began, those committees were kind of going off on their own. I think some of them even on their own. And again, when we all got back together, Bill and I sat in a meeting at BSU going, where are we going? What are, what's the process? I got Carl Hall, to his credit, said, you're right, we need to focus back. He and Scott had gotten together, Scott and he said, we need to focus to get these people back. Now, remember, Vision First completed their contract when they provided that draft. It was supposed to be amended, as the chairman said, and then they were to present us I mean, the, the final version based on our comments. There was no final comments. So when Dr. Carl got them back together two weeks ago. Then Melissa had her seizure, and that's where it stopped. So there's still, if you were to go and begin to talk to committee members or executive committee members or people who are chairmen in those committees. I dare say you would get as many opinions and descriptions of where they are as you had individuals involved. Is that too strong to say? No. So I, if, and I'm listening clearly to what the chairman says about, and what Scott is, if y'all came and said, Joe, we want to make we want a recommendation on what we allocate in the budget. I would tell you, from me personally, I wouldn't allocate a dime until I got more information than what they have presented so far. And who else is going to be involved? What is the financial expectations? And what is the end result that we anticipate? Because, as the chairman said, Homelessness, homelessness being a big issue, that's just one pedal in the shotgun shell of what this, this approach was to address. And it also, racial issues, economic issues, uh, long-term goals of the community, famous state, who do we want to be when we grow up? Those five questions, and until you have a focus and a laser beam type approach, you're going to be disappointed. Your constituents are going to be disappointed. All of y'all will walk away from the table going, I don't know what we've done. And keeping in mind that our 25000 was just a portion of what this consultant group got paid. I don't know what the overall contract so what I'm saying is, this is a classic example, in my opinion, and I'll shut up after this, but, but why some folks don't trust local governments and consultants. I mean, I, I, I am not happy about all this in my, in my state. Mark, <coughs> I, I think, I think Jeremy was right in, in saying everybody thought it was going to be a good, you know, kumbaya, you know, we, we, we're going to make the, the perfect organization, a group to, to 
help solve our problems. You know, uh, and it, it just it's just that it came all together. Now, the truth be told, uh, if they do come back uh, and say they need some some money, you know, <coughs> I mean, where would the money come from? So it, you know, it, it, they, you might want to have something. So, you know, we always have some contingency or something, but you know, because. She had stroke and she died. I mean, yeah. and that, that really, that's really that's <coughs> really all I'm saying about it from the standpoint of is that am I disappointed in the product to this point? Absolutely. I'm disappointed in the product at this point. <coughs> and keep in mind I was just one voice in the room. But my hopes were that we were going to get the good, the bad, and the ugly about this community. And then we were going to be able to try to formulate some plans and some ideas about how to address those issues, to, to improve on all. Um, that hasn't happened. Now, are they with these committees to some degree? Is that what they're going to be charged with doing? Yes, that's kind of the way it's breaking out right now. And again, my issue with, <coughs> since we, don't have the final, final product. We spent what we were spent and, and agreed to do that. And, I, and I'll and i be the first one to say, I mean, I felt like that's what we needed to do. Either that or we were going to be on the outside looking in if this thing had took off like a spaceship and then we were going to be saying what happened, you know. So the, the need was there because I would really <coughs> love to know what the good, the bad, and the ugly is. I want somebody to tell me. I think I know what they are, but validate that. You know, let's validate it. Well, again, I, I'm not happy with the product, but if the thing comes together and they get it all resolved and we get that final draft, they have backed away from the idea of an executive director to try to look at that because they know that it's going to be expensive to do that. But they thought, like, initially that that would be the best thing to do, and then you leave that fundraising part of it to that executive director. And there were some folks that didn't like that. And I'll just tell you, the chamber didn't necessarily like it because they were going to be competing for the same dollars in the community. Um, so reality was, great reality is right now is that absolutely, it hasn't delivered what we were hoping it was going to deliver. Um, as Joe touched on, that's the reason why Vision First was back in the community is because they also know that it didn't deliver. The deliverables were not what the community was looking for, so they stepped up above their contract and said, we're going to come back into the community and we're going to try to see if we can help put it together so that we can get what your expectations are of the deliverable. And now we know what happened at the, that first meeting to try to accomplish that. My only concern is is that I said we're talking about something that will take us all the way uh, to July of 2021. Now, I'm just trying to be realistic from the standpoint that if something was to come up and we would want to consider do we want to continue to play, then from my standpoint of physical responsibility, if you've got funding that there that you know that you can do it, step into that, fine. If you don't want to fund it, then that's fine. But until 2021 gets here, and if there's something there, you're going to be on the outside looking in. It's just, in my we're opinion. We're still getting voted out. Even if we allocate some... That's it. We spend, I'm not saying spend we, the money and write We still can vote it vote down and just, just not, not, not vote for it at all. From my standpoint, just good financing would be is that if there's something potentially out there that has the need for the expenditure, do you go ahead and allocate? That's it. And then if you don't spend it, then you don't spend it. I'm with Mark. I think it needs to go to contingency. You know, they have twenty thousand dollars in contingency. If we need it next year, we'll have it. If we don't, then we use it somewhere. Well, Dr. Carl Hall was told I need a bird supper last year. Mm -hmm. That there is a bird supper no bird supper last year.
based on the comment that y'all have made in the prior, that y'all were not supportive of it, because you didn't know, not that you were just against it, you didn't know enough to support it. <laughs> well, he said that a year ago. Yeah. That person. Now again, right on what you're saying to me, whether you are saying let's take it out of contingency or you create a line, you're doing the same thing. My point is, is that we should leave the door open that potentially there may be some need, a need for some additional funding, but that's a vote that you've got to take at that time when the plan comes out, whether you take the funding out of contingency or whether you create a line out. All I'm saying is, is that you need to be thinking about potentially funding because if you say no funding, then that's no funding. You're not going to have any funding until after 2021 when you're working on 21, 22 budget before you can say, yeah, we got some funding. You know, my concern with this, and I think I expressed this to you the first time this came up, and Mr. Pritchard, you've been here for a while. How many times have we started something like this? Three or four times. Mm -hmm. And it's go on and it's get to a point and it's stop and we're delegating the results. And, that and I think right. this is the same cycle that we are going through now to try to get something moved forward. And some of these things that they need to take care of and help the community. But when it's come down to spending that type of money and for two years, I think it's about two years, we have gotten no results. And I think this is, I can go back and pull four or five packages that started this off in 2015 before we came on the board. And we're still at the same little junction. Jerome uh, Tucker was at the meeting the And he had to be in my office last week.
moving forward potentially with this because um, I don't want to go to any more meetings that I don't have to go to. <laughs> it's just that simple. Now, if y'all want to go to the meetings so that you can learn what the process is, then you need to go to the meeting so you can learn something about it. But if this is not something that you're not that you're already got in your mind that you're not willing to to do it, and Miss Evans, I'm not picking on you, but if Miss Evans says been down this road, it's never been successful, I don't think we need to do it, then that's good, that's fine. That's the position that you take. God has said, I'm not putting another nickel in. And, and that's fine too, if that's the decision. But this is something that we need to make a decision on of whether or not we're still open to being a partner in this thing, or if we're not, let me know. And I don't mind sending the message to Dr. Carvajal and Scott Purvis to say, forget it, the county's out of it, we're done. And I won't go to any more meetings. I'm, I'm not saying that we, we don't need to, to, to continue attending a meeting or, or we, I, I'm just opposed to spending another dollar on it until we have something tangible for the $25,000 for our But then how about you going go to the meetings for me? I go to once. <laughs> and I'll tell them exactly what my <laughs> suggestion is. If they bring the level, then you'll go to the meeting. Yes. Yeah. So, so, if it was coming out of your right front pocket, your right front pocket, your right front pocket, would you spend the money to do this after two years and up again? I think Mike Clay would just designate five, ten, fifteen thousand dollars. You don't have to spend it. That, 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 and then so let's stop this conversation and go forward. Well, that's probation. I'm not asking to say write a check. I'm just saying that potentially if well, y'all think you would want well, to continue to do this, well, you need to have Like I said earlier, I think I need to go with contingency. Because I don't think I want to show my support at all for it until we get a new level. So if it's on a line item in a budget, then I might have to do it. Then, huh? then, then I agree. Melinda is sending to you this crap. It's 76 pages, Melinda. I think so, yes, sir. Y'all all are getting electronic and right, And I will commit to reading every 76 pages. <laughs> but not today. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Fair enough. Do I can take time out? Somebody needs to work. <laughs> You know, I hate to agree with you. I know you do. You hate to agree with me. Hey, I hate it so bad when you agree with me. I need to go back to question my decision. There you go. Thank you. 
that she is, he is whoever.
But there's no truth to if if the Lyons County owns the property, I mean it doesn't even make any sense that it has to be open to the public, right? Well, I've also mentioned about this. We haven't had a lot of discussion about getting an inventory of the county property that we have. Why not put it up for sale? I mean, if he's wanting to sell this, I mean, if the house is sell that thing for 20000 you get out of there. I mean, we're not going to do something with it. Council, what's the look about that?